Hello, good morning, good, good night, everyone. Uh, we had a small uh, connection problem, but now everything is solved. Welcome to our third campfire. Welcome to our third campfire of this Jota Jody. Uh, we, this is the third one now, and we're going to talk about, about a really interesting topic today. So uh, remember, this is happening because it's part of the Jota Jody World event that is happening during this weekend. So tonight, let me show you, yes, okay. We are going to talk about a very interesting thing that is happening in the Inter-America region. So uh, I'll be your host tonight, or this morning, or this evening for the next 30 minutes. And we will talk about uh, something that is the proof of our success of scouting in reaching out to all. Remember that after the small talk of our presentation, you can ask questions for our presenter to, to respond. You can ask them either on the chat box or if you go to questions and topics, there's an orange button there where you can submit your questions. So feel free to submit them and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. It is my pleasure now uh, to introduce Jesus Arenas. Jesus joined the staff of uh, WASM in 2005 and currently is one of the executives who supports operations in the Inter-America Region Support Center, specifically to provide guidance and to support to the Caribbean area. He has a master's degree in education in sexuality, population, human development, and gender issues, which has given him the opportunity to develop several regional actions against bullying within the organization. Even though he has no scout education, his desires to serve the community always has been present, employing some of his free time to develop activities, supporting people, supporting people living with HIV AIDS, and promoting awareness against the stigma and discrimination faced by this segment of the population in his native Panama. Jesus will present the process that, that was developed in the Inter-America regions to generate institutional guidelines about diversity and inclusion. This includes the regulations, policies, as the operation guides and definitions. These are used to promote to these concepts to all memberships, including the social reality, as well as the impact of our scout organizations. So please uh, have a warm, warm meeting to Jesus. Jesus, are you there? Hola. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Panama. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm I feel very humble, and I feel very happy to be sharing with all of you what uh, has been going on in the Inter-American region and how it is affecting um, everyone living in our region. Um, so thank you for all of you to be here. And uh, as Luis mentioned, I will be sharing all the process that we have in, been implementing in the region since um, a couple of years ago. And we have so many things done and we have so many things to do yet and that's what we're working on uh, so let's begin so the inter-american region is aligned to the strategic areas mentioned in the vision 2023 uh, by being such a diverse, a diverse continent i'm talking about the americas all the americas uh, um, there is uh, so much things to do regarding diversity and inclusion of course, our, our operations in the Inter-America Support Center, uh, um, we are not an exception of what's going on in the reality. So the progress that we have implemented in our region started with the recognition and the acceptance of the living in such a diverse and um, 
in, in a diverse region. For example, the first thing that we did is that, and perhaps is the most important, is that each employee of the Inter-America Support Center, as well as each member of the executive and decision-making bodies in the region, recognize that there is a reality that we can make more attractive our mission to provide to 100 million young people to be active citizens creating positive changes in themselves and their community. So yeah, that was the first step, the self-realization and self-acceptance of a reality that we are not um, an exception of it. Also what we did, um, it was uh, a rebrand, if we can call it in that way, in our regional uh, mission since a couple of years ago. And I will textually give you an extract of this um, mission that is the implementation of policies, both global and regional, enabling us to get a direction and achieve an alignment with what is defined in the world and regional scout conferences, all in the spirit of harmony, achieving unity with respect for the differences and the diversity. So once again, here at the Inter-America Support Center, we recognize that each of us is different from one another and we are taking advantages of those differences. So one uh, specific activity that we, um, that we did was the first diversity and inclusion uh, symposium um, in the Inter-American region. It was held in September of, um, of 2015 here in Panama. It was the first space to exchange views and experiences at regional level on the issue of diversity and inclusion. It was attended by, by 17 NSOs of the region and also was attended by one participant of the European Scout region and members of 10 organizations that specifically work on related issues in order to know what is happening not only in all the countries that attended the event, but also what's going on in other regions and in other organizations. Because something that I try to communicate to everyone, uh, every country that I have visited with the operations of the, of the region is that we have to know that we are not the society, we are part of it. So we try to implement that system in that symposium. We have uh, so many opinions of so many um, agencies of the United Nations and so many others, and it was a very, very good experience. Not for the attendees, but for us here at the office. So we keep learning, and that's something that uh, we're happy to do. Then what we did was the establishment of a diversity and inclusion regional team. The team was formed with the approval of the regional director and includes both men and women of different countries. Um, all of them related to the area of diversity and inclusion in their professional or working environment in order to have a gender perspective that's, as I mentioned, we included uh, men and women, and also uh, one of the main advantages for all of them, well, I'm part of it, uh, so all of us to be part um, of that group and by being from different countries is that we know, uh, we keep knowing, so different realities, and that is what gave us this rich uh, document documentation that we now are sharing with all the NSOs. Um, talking about the documents specifically, the first thing that we did was the guide of diversity and inclusion. That was the first uh, product, if we can call it in that way, um, uh, obtained uh, from the diversity and inclusion uh, symposium. It was published. Um, to provide terms that may be applicable in the development of actions of any NSO. Among the terms detailed in this guide, 
I can mention diversity, which we find that diversity refers to the variety and difference of individuals or groups from each other, where these differences, rather than creating fear, misinformation, and prejudice, should be seen as an opportunity to enrich the forms of educa educating and, le and learning. Also, we define inclusion that is to recognize the changes or modifications that must be made in our efforts to create a more equitable and respectful world to all types of differences, ensuring that everyone is full beneficiary of their rights. Uh, following up, then we developed the regional plan for the next year, uh, the regional plan for the years uh, 2016. Uh, through the 2018, uh, with the purpose to create an inclusive region, um, we merge the efforts from the all the staff of the Inter America Support Center, and also we invited the Inter Americans Com Meeting uh, Committee, also members of the coordinating group of the Youth Program, Adults in Scouting, and Institutional Development Regional Networks, as well as volunteers who develop specific roles in the region just to create those actions that will be impacting, in, impacting um, positively in our, our plan for the, for the next year. And of course, diversity and inclusion was one of the main areas that was discussed in this regional plan. Next, what we did was uh, the policy of diversity and inclusion, the, the regional policy. And this is the establishment of regional definitions referred to the topics of diversity and inclusion. The draft of this document was first distributed to each NSO in order to receive their opinions or comments. And it will be presented to the plenary of our next Inter-American conference that will be in two weeks and then it will be distributed to each country for the further implementation. So what we have uh, promoted in the countries of the region so far, what we have promoted is to receive the point of view and training from external experts, as we mentioned before, we have um, um, received the opinion and also successful experiences from um, so many other organizations. Just to give you a specific example, just a, a couple of weeks ago, we um, arranged um, a MOU with the Special Olympics. So this will be the first step for a big, and a big project that we will be jointly be developing. And also, we are supporting diversity and inclusion national forums. Now we know that so many countries realize that it's important to discuss the topic and we are also there for them as a regional body. Also the creation of a diversity and inclusion uh, national policy. Once again, in so many countries, they are using the, the regional one as a guide, as a, as a model to implement their national policies. Also, we are including the topic not only in the membership, but in all the areas of the organization. And we are trying to change our idea from receiving people to reaching people. That's why, that's what uh, we are trying to do right now. We don't have to be seated and wait until the young people come to us just to receive this amazing experience that it's scouting. We are changing our minds that we have to reach them, but we have to reach them with a proper and with um, more inclusive and more diverse program. So, so far that's what we have been doing uh, here at the Inter-American region and uh, I see now that you have a couple of uh, questions here, and I will be more than happy to answer those.
All right, so uh, would you like to go through each, each question and you can read them out loud and we will answer one by, by one, okay? Okay, good. So the first one is how the role of Scout to open a better generation? Well, the first thing is that we have to read the, the question. In order to be open to a better generation, we have to listen to this generation. We have to include the new generation in all our, uh, our executive bodies, not just in the membership. We have to listen to their point of view. Um, some people say, oh no, the, the youngsters, they are so radical in their point of view, but people, we have to know that the same, the, 40 years ago, the world was very different of what we're living right now. And we have to listen to these, um, to these new generations. We have to, now we have so many uh, technology, we have so many other things that um, are affecting us positively. So that's how this, the scouts uh, are open to a better generation. We have to include them and not just in the, to receive uh, to be a beneficiary of the program, but they have also to be part of the making decision bodies. Okay, the next one is, what is the approach to inclusion for NSO and NSAs where all your members are male? And it's sent by Philip Bird. Well, as I mentioned before, um, we still have changes to do. Um, we know that there are so many uh, countries and uh, so many spaces maybe where uh, the male figure is like the main focus of the, of the program. But what we're trying to mention what we're trying to do is that we are trying to change that, that point of view. There are so many women, young uh, girls, uh, ladies, that they are also impacting positively in, in all the areas of, of the organization. Just to give you a couple of examples, um, we have women included in our Inter-American Scout Committee. We have women that are leading some of our networks. We are lead, uh, women. Recently, we, are, we, are, we hired a new um, director that is a female. So their point of view, it's very different. It's very well received. And that's what we have to do. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have to look at um, just to focus in our differences, we have to take those differences as an advantage and in a way to improve um, how our um, program is delivered and what a better way than having um, both men and women in all the spaces um, relating to scouting. Okay, the next one is, is volunteerism scouting developing inter entrepreneurial leadership? Yes. One big example is, for example, the, the ILT that is developed each year. And there are so many great activities, for, um, um, projects that have been product of the ILT, Inter-American Leadership Training, for example, the the Truth for the World and the Books for All are one of the major uh, products that have been uh, uh, taken as a product of those um, of those trainings. And what we are encouraging is to all those um, male and female young members to be also um, leading projects that can be replicated in all the world so yes we are trying to do that we will keep doing that by uh, the end of this year we will be having the fourth ILT in Guatemala so 
yes, uh, we are developing those entrepreneurial leadership that you're mentioning. Okay. What do you think are the ma major current challenges related to diversity and inclusion in this region? Uh, by being such a, div a diverse region, as I mentioned, we still have um, or live in scenarios where aspects such as ethnic or racial origin, gender, sexual preference and identity, migrant populations, religion, and just to name a few, create situations that reach exclusion, intolerance, and violence. So those are one of the major challenges that we're still facing. Another aspect is that we are used on many occasions to take actions to live that live shortly uh, without any follow-up, turning many of these achievements on welfareism, thinking only in the present, but without leaving any sustainability for the future reaching no impact permanently in our acting and thinking. So those two are one of the major challenges that we are face, still facing in our region. What are some of the ways your region is doing to assist national scout organizations with this program? And this is saying by Mr. Peter Blatch. Okay. So uh, one of the um, things that we are doing to assist the national scout organizations is mostly provide guidance in the developing of their national policies, also developing the national forums and so many activities, as I mentioned before, that are uh, related to diversity and inclusion. Uh, also, we are trying to give them um, another panorama that is the amount of benefits that they could have are not only a possible increase in their membership, but the image projected to the society will improve, which could be attractive to investors who are interested in the, co in the cause that is developed to be recognized as an organization focused on the, on the recognition of the defense of human rights. And this will, by changing this, they can position themselves in at national level, national level, as an organization that can be used as a uh, reference. Also, the increase of the level of impact on their educational proposal, as the young people will acquire the value of recognition and respect for the diversity, will give them the tools to, to develop inclusive practices. So that's why, that's how we are um, assisting the national organization. So what countries are included in the inter-American region? Well, um, I can, think, I can tell you that we have, um, now we have, we're very happy to announce that Aruba and Curaçao are full members of, of WASM, uh, but in total there are 34 um, um, NSOs included in the Inter-American region. And as I mentioned, it's very, it's a very challenge, a challenging, uh, to to merge all those countries, for example, the southern southern uh, country, the Central American countries, the northern countries, also the Caribbean, all of these areas have their own ways of act and their own way of um, proceed, and we have to sometimes uh, create. Um, very smooth and a very um, neutral way to act because as I mentioned before each country is very different from one another and each area is very different from one another but answering directly to your to your question there are 34 NSOs including in our region
Okay, we have another one that is, uh, what are the benefits for any NSO to include this topic in his agenda? And um, the topic is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, they will be recognized as a, as a, a organization that will be taken into consideration not only um it will be uh, it, it can be uh, taken um taken as a as an organization that is respecting the human rights if we respect the values and uh, how the people live how the people think how the people act then we are given freedom to the people we will be recognized as a safe space for the people to be free, to be who they are, to love who, whoever they love, to believe in whatever they believe. So that's one of the main benefits. We will be taking as a space, a safe space for a, a young men and women that are trying to develop all these good activities that will be reflected in them and also in their communities. All right, do we have... Um, um, Jesus, how, what about, how can you tell us, uh, is there, how can the regional office transmit these goals to other offices or how can they achieve this? How can they share what they have achieved so far? Well, all the official documents that we have uh, published, uh, you can find it on scan.org. And um, uh, for example, the first the, um, diversity and inclusion document can be found there. As I mentioned, also once the diversity and inclusion regional policy is approved by the regional conference, it will be dis distributed to all the countries and also will be published um on scout.org so you will be able to reach directly all those documents so if you haven't um signed in into scout.org please go ahead and do that and you will be able to find as many documents as the regional office uh have been doing there um, besides those two documents those official big documents that we are working on also, we have published one special uh, regional bulletin that was dedicated, the first one was dedicated to, to women. It was dedicated on how the women impact in the, um, in the scout movement. And the first one, and the second one was directly to diversity and inclusion. Uh, successful experiences that have been developed in, in so many countries. And all those two can be found also on scout.org. And we have one more question. Uh, it says, yes. tell us more about partnerships, please. What are the benefits of having partnerships with other groups? What benefits do partners get from being with scouts? Well, um, we have identified so far uh, partnerships. We have partnerships with the United Nations agencies. And as I mentioned, we also recently signed a new partnership with the Special Olympics. This help us to don't be replicating uh, the same efforts to don't be wasting time, money, and all of this that is included in so many actions. So instead of doing that, that working on the same things, but separately, we're working together with the same goal. Of course, each uh, agency will be focused in their specific um, uh, population, if we can call it in that way, but we're having the same goal. 
So what we're doing is a win-win uh, system where uh, we are developing activities. For example, the scouts will be uh, uh, helping in activities that will be uh, carried by the Special Olympics. That in, in, uh, in that example, I can tell you that people that haven't faced the, the um, diversity of people living with disabilities, they will be um, uh, um, having the sensibilization because one thing is to receive all the material you can receive every day so many um, um, presentations like this one but you don't know it until you leave it so providing the opportunity to the people to have direct contact with people living with certain conditions with, with certain um, um, disability, as I mentioned, specifically to, uh, talking, up, uh, talking about the Special Olympics, it will be an even, even more uh, great, uh, greater uh, experience. And what other partners are you looking at having agreements with? Um, Okay, uh, one of the advantages uh, of being established here in Panama is that mostly all of the regional agencies um, here in Panama, uh, uh, of the United Nations are also here in Panama. But um, what we're trying to do is to go to knock doors and to see who is able to, who wants to participate and who finds attractive what we're doing here. Um, so far on the agenda, there is um, um, no new agreements, but uh, as I mentioned, the, the last one was signed just a couple of weeks ago. So uh, as you know, it takes time, it, it takes um, terms of agreement, so we have to look with them, how we can work together, and then I can give you, we will be providing um, a list of people that is interested in our, in our purpose. Because I mean, it's, we can have uh, 40, 50 uh, terms of, of agreement, but uh, the main goal is that we are working on the same, uh, on the same area that will be giving us an even better impact, an even greater impact. So that's what we're trying to do. We are trying to um, look for organizations that are working with, uh, with, uh, with the youth um, and also with adults. Um, and that's what uh, we will be doing. Okay, so if there's no more questions left, then nothing more than to thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your good practices. These campfires have been really helpful because uh, since the beginning, since campfire number one, we heard about local initiatives on diversity and inclusion. Then in campfire yes. number two, we heard about uh, uh, in a bigger scale how NSOs, for example, work on diversity and inclusion. So it's really interesting hearing now what is a whole region doing in, in this topic. Um, and also to connect all the dots in our fourth campfire, which is at uh, Sunday, October 16 at 8 GMT. We will, we will finally connect all the dots and have our last campfire about measuring social impact. How all these uh, talks that we have through this campfire one, two, and three, how can we measure it and show it to the world? So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Jesus, for sharing your good practices. Thank you everyone for waking up at this time uh, or being available at this time. And hope to see you soon in campfire number four. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you, Luis, and thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening, morning, night. <laughs> Bye. Bye.